or Exodus 14. Look down with me at verse number. Uh, let's, let's see here. Look, look down at verse number five. Give you a little bit of context on what's going on here. And um, the Lord's really been working on my heart on this. Exodus 14, and verse five. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his, of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, uh, "Why have we done this?" that we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened uh, the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea uh, beside, or, uh, in camping by the sea beside uh, Pi-Haroth uh, before uh, Bela Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because thou, because there was no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away uh, to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt with us? to carry us forth out of Egypt. Now this was the first time they went against Moses. They'll do it uh, multiple more times, but this was the first time. Is not this the word that we uh, did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Well, that's something that many people say today. Yeah. I'd rather live like I used to live than live where God wants me to live today. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've been there before and say, you know what, it would have been better, but it wouldn't have been better where you were. It's a whole lot better where, where God's taken us. Yeah. Verse 13, and, and Moses said unto the people, and this is my text verse tonight, verse 13 and 14, and Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which we will sh uh, show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. Lord, uh, put them. Lord, we pray for your presence this evening. We pray, Lord, that you just help us for the next few minutes as we look at your word. And God, I pray, Lord, that you would bless Unity Baptist Church, Pastor Kiever, and Lord, his family. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. And God, we pray that Christ would be uplifted and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Um, I heard a story about two men that were seriously ill. They occupied, occupied the same room in the hospital. One of them was lying in the bed near uh, the only window in the room. And every day when he was allowed to spend some time sitting up in his bed uh, to help the draining of fluid from his lungs, the other man was forced to spend all his days flat on his back. They talked about their lives, their families, their jobs, their vacation. Every time when the first man was sitting up by the window, he described in details what he saw outside the window. His roommate always looked for those moments when his world would be broadened and brightened by the world outside. Amazing views of a park with a beautiful lake could be seen from the window of their room. Children de uh, delightfully played among the ducks and swans. Uh, couples walked arm in arm across colorful flowers. Also, the stunning skyline, city skyline would be seen. When the man by the window had thoroughly described all that was happening outside the window, his roommate would close his eyes and imagine all the beautiful scenes of the world uh, that they were told to him. One night, the man who was closest to the window, though, he died peacefully in his sleep, and his roommate was very sad. After some time, the nurse came in to visit, uh, visit him, and she asked him, uh, and he asked her, he said, can you move me closer to the window? The nurse agreed and kindly made the switch. When she had left the room, the man slowly and painfully propped himself up on his elbow, and he began to look at the world outside. He was stunned. The window faced a blank wall. When the nurse came to visit him the next day, he told her all about the beautiful things outside the window and that his roommate described. The nurse replied that the roommate was blind. She said probably he was just trying to encourage you. Folks, it's my heart's desire today more than anything else I want to encourage you today. You know what? There's enough discouragement in our world. There's enough discouragement around us. You're going to go to the workplace tomorrow. You're going to go to the schoolhouse tomorrow. You're going to go somewhere tomorrow. You're going to go to the grocery store this evening or the gas station, and there's enough discouragement around us. What we need to do, folks, as the body of Christ, is we need to encourage one another. You know what? We need to build each other up. There's a lot of chiding going on within the church. Uh, uh, brother, brother versus brother, sister versus sister. Enough people are trying to take each other out. Satan's doing an awful good job, folks. I told a man this past week, he'd been riding with me to the prisons. I got him in in both facilities. And I told him, I said, brother, I said, the number one thing Satan's trying to do right now is divide the church. 
You know what? If He can divide us, He's defeated us. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. And I just praise the Lord tonight. You know what? Many of you are overwhelmed by situations right now. I heard multiple times in a prayer request this evening what was said. It was said there was a loss of life. There's heavy hearts in here tonight. You know what? Uh, many of us are not just overwhelmed, but we're overworked. You know what? You go to your job, you work. Uh, Pastor Keith, we had this conversation as I walked in the door there. You know what? People are working and they're seeing their paychecks. They're working longer hours and still you go to the grocery store and it goes less. You know what? You go to the gas station and it goes less. Every single day it seems like, man, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overworked, and then you're overlooked. You're like, man, why do I keep getting passed up on this opportunity? If only I was in this position, if only this had happened. You know what? We're just playing out overloaded these days. Uh, I don't know if any of y'all feel that way, but I felt that way a little bit in my life. You know what I found out? I found out when I, when, I, when I get overwhelmed, when I get overworked, when I get overlooked, you know what I tend to do? I tend to get depressed. I tend to get discouraged. I tend to, get, I tend to uh, get, get away from what I know. Uh, but with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to preach on this thought just for a few minutes when you're at the end of your rope. You know, when you're at the end of your rope. We're going to look at the children of Israel. And a lot of times when you're at the end of the rope, you're discouraged. You've just put all you can. You've done all you can, and you're just like, I can't go any further. I just want to. I just want to throw in the towel. I just want to give up. You know what, folks? If this ain't good preaching tonight, that'll be all right. I'll preach to myself because you know what? I need this. You know what? I need to be reminded. Do you know what? When I'm discouraged, uh, where my hope is, where my hope rests. It don't rest in Justin. It don't rest in my beautiful wife back there. It don't rest in those six youngins that we got. It rests in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is my steadfast. He is my rock of my salvation. He is the reason that I can go on another day. He is what gives me breath. You know what, friends? It's not our ability. It's not, oh, well, I'm going to go do something. Everything you see, God created. You know what? If it's God's, you know what? We ought to just let God have full control. William Ward said it this way, Discouragement is dissatisfaction with the past. Distaste for the present and distrust for the future. It is ingratitude for the blessings of yesterday, indifference to the opportunities of today, and insecurity regarding strength for tomorrow. It is unawareness of the presence of beauty, unconcern for the needs of our fellow man, uh, unbelief in the promises of old. It is impatience with time, immaturity of thought, and impoliteness to God. I think about this tonight. There's probably some individuals in here that should be here tonight but are not. Folks, what happened? Some of them got discouraged. Yeah. I thought about a family. My wife can tell you I was so glad to see them. We went to Calvary this morning. It's not very often we get to go to our home church because normally I am preaching away. Normally we're out trying to update a church or we're trying to present at a new church. Uh, we're trying to constantly be used of the Lord. But we got to be at our church this morning. And me and my wife had a conversation about, a, about somebody in the church uh, yesterday. And I said, I sure, I said I, I, we need to go by there and visit them. I said, because I, last that we spoke, they weren't doing real well. Well, it was such a blessing that I seen them walk into the church today. You know what? It encouraged my heart because I know they've been through some stuff. This, yeah. They've literally told me about some of the situation that was going on. And I just think, I think back today, who is it that should be here tonight, but this is just scourge? Maybe they've got out of the will of God. Maybe they've become a prodigal and just literally just went away from the Lord. I had an inmate tell me one day, you know, it's special in the prisons because we have these stainless steel tables, but they're bolted to the floor. Uh, folks, I'm glad they're bolted to the floor. Uh, there's some days when stuff can get a little bit, and you don't hear a lot about that. And I'm not going to tell you a whole lot about it, but just know your prayers are being answered for our safety because there's some days when it really does get pretty, pretty leery in there. But and needless to say, I was sitting at a table with a man one day and we were sitting there talking and he had told me and he's serving a life sentence and he's been in there nearly 20 some odd years. And he told me how many more years he had before he would finally be released and serve his time. And I said to him, I said, why don't I ever see you at the service? And he told me, he said, he said, I'm, he said, he said, I've been eating at the hog pen for a while. And I told him, I said, I said, I said, do you know the Lord? He said, I know the Lord. He said, but I've chosen to eat at the hog pen for a while. And I asked him why. He said, because of shame. And I told him, I said, brother, I said, I said, can I remind you today? I said that the father's got to spread. I said, he's got to feast and all you got to do is come back. Amen. I said, but you, I said, you, you got to give up the hog pen. And he, he said, but I've been over here in the hog pen for so long. I said, he'll take that shame. You know what? God can forgive anything that you've made a mess of. God can fix anything you've made a mess of. And so I just try to encourage him. And that's what I want to do tonight is try to encourage you. I think about this. We take one step forward and two steps back. Often we put everything out there. We give it our all. And I'm sure we've all been there at some point in time. I know, like I said, I've, this past week, it seems like every time we take a step for the Lord, Satan seems to be hitting us back two steps. 
And I'm like, Lord, how do we continue to press on? You know, you, uh, I, may, uh, I had the opportunity to pray with my pastor even this morning. And we were just sitting there and we were just praying about some things. And I'm just grateful that we've got some people where we can, they'll put their arm around you. They'll encourage you. But I'm grateful that I've got a Father up in heaven that wraps His arms around me, that loves me during the times when nobody else knows what's going on. Nobody else knows what we're battling. Nobody else knows what we're struggling. When we feel like we're at the end of that rope and we're hanging on and this is all we've got, we've put our last effort in, we can do no more. I thought about it sometimes when we do it, we do it through prayer. We'll pray for loved ones to be healed or loved ones to be saved. We'll pray for a certain job. We'll pray that we step out by faith. We'll pray for a family member. We'll pray for something and it seems like, Lord, nothing Nothing's happening here. Or maybe we sacrifice. We put all, uh, we take everything we've got and put it into this. Uh, we do the time, the effort. We invest into a person's life. We invest into a friend's life, a young person's life. We work physically. Uh, we give it our all. We put our children in the right place at the right time. We help them with their schoolwork. We help them with their Bible study. We help them get all that they can. Uh, I thought about uh, our service to the Lord. I thought about our how we work in, in here in the church. Uh, there's some people that work around the church. You'll never know anything that they're doing, but they're working behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, I think about the ones who clean the church. A lot of time that goes overlooked. Thank you, individuals that spend, spend time cleaning the church. Uh, God's house ought to look right. You know what? God's house ought to be clean. It ought to be nice. You ought to walk in. You ought to, you ought to be like, man, I'm glad. Uh, thank you for those that greet us when we walk through the door. I appreciate that more than you could ever know. When people say, hey, brother, how are you doing? It amazes when people, when people know my children's names. Uh, so I know they've got a prayer card. They've looked over it a time or two. But uh, sure enough, uh, you know what? These people uh, will go unnoticed. And you know what? Sometimes when we don't get noticed for what we've done, when we've sit there and we've labored and we've sit there and worked and we've sacrificed and we've prayed, you know what? It gets discouraging sometimes. You know what? We've worked hard at this. And reality sets in and we begin to think, hey, nobody else knows what's going on. But can I remind you that God knows what's going on? God sees your work. God sees your labor of love. I thought about Stephen over in the book of uh, Acts chapter number 8 uh, when Stephen was about to be stoned. You know where it says there in verse number 55 of chapter number 8, it says, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You know where his eyes were on? His eyes were on the Lord. His were not eyes were on those men that were casting those stones at him. His eyes were on other things. You know what? When you're, when you're hanging on to that rope, some things in your life uh, begin to... Uh, some things begin to uh, magnify and you begin to see something. Stephen was about to be stoned, be stoned, but his eyes remained on Jesus. Something we all should do. Can I encourage you today? Don't give up. Wherever you're at on this rope, whether you're down at the bottom, whether you're at the top, whether you've just gotten on the rope, uh, you know what? Don't give up. Continue on. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will hold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. So when you're at the end of your rope, for your friends, don't let go. Hang on to Jesus. You know what, if I can encourage you today, you know what, hang on to Jesus. we got to continue on. We cannot let go when we're there uh, at the end of the rope. But look down with me at verse number 13 just for a minute here. Like I said, three, three very quick points this evening. I want you to notice first and foremost, when you're at the end of your rope, first thing you need to do is hang on. You know what that means? It means don't give up. Don't give in. Uh, chapter 14, verse thir or 13 says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hey, I notice right here, it says stand still. This literally meant hold your ground. You know what? It's not time to back up. It's not time to give devil the devil place. It's time to continue to hold your ground. It's an amazing thing if you'll go back through the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, and look at the whole armor of God, dear friend. Yeah. I don't see anywhere on that where we protect the backside. God didn't give you anything to put on the backside. Why is that? Because you're not to retreat. Right. You know what? You're to press forward. Sometimes we have to take a stand and we cannot move any further. Sometimes we have to just dig in. We have to get those feet uh, uh, pressed into the sand, pressed into the dirt. We have to plow in and we just got to keep going. You know what? And I know that that's not always easy. But you know what? The Christian life isn't always easy. There's times... I. I I don't know where we got this in our mentality, where we got this in our churches today where the grass is always greener on the other side. Now, when we get to heaven, oh, it's going to be wonderful. But for the Christian, dear friend, Jesus said they were against Him. What do you think they're going to do to you? Yeah. You know what? They're against you too. He said they don't hate you for who you are. They hate me for who I am. You know, and we have to remember that today, that it's not because of who we are, it's because of who we stand with. 
We stand with Christ. And as long as we stand with Christ, they're going to come against us. Moses spoke to the children of Israel. I think about what, uh, what uh, God then told Joshua after Moses would pass off the scene. He told him, he said, you're about to take on this tremendous task of leading the children of Israel into the promised land. He tells them in Joshua 1 and 9, he says, Have I not uh, commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage? Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Uh, God was reaffirming uh, Joshua that he was with him and he was to keep going. Second Chronicles 15 and 7 says, Be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. You might say, I feel like giving up. I can't do this on my own. Hey, dear friend, you're right. You can't do this on your own. There's enough of us trying to do it in our own power, and we ain't getting nowhere. We're spinning wheels, but we're literally sitting in the same spot. Why is that? Because we can't do it in our own power. I've talked to enough men behind prison doors, and every single time I've had men tell me, I said, I said are you going to heaven? Absolutely. I said, tell me how. Yeah. Man, I've worked so hard. I've done so much. I got baptized. I went in there, and I got baptized. Hey, I went over there, and I've done this. I love it when they tell me how good of a person they are. Yeah. I'll turn and I'll say, why are you in prison? <laughs> you know, folks, I'm very blunt. Amen. But that's what we need. Yeah. I'm going into a facility where they don't need you to be uh, to, 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 uh, to give them um, uh, some, uh, some ear pleasing. Uh, you know what they need? They need the truth. Yeah. The reason so many people are in the shape that they are today, the reason our churches are in the shape today is because we've had people just sit there and tell them what they wanted to hear, not what they needed to hear. You know what? We've got to continue to pre uh, preach the Word. We've got to continue to preach on sin. You know what? There's still only one way to heaven today, dear friends. I had a man tell me the other day, and I'd sit there, and he's a Muslim man. You pray for this young man. I, I can't give you all of his details, but he's a 23-year-old man. I can tell you that much. You pray for this young man. Didn't know anything about religion growing up, and he told me all this. And anyways, long story short, uh, he's, he's practicing Muslim now. But before I left the conversation, I had that young man take a Bible. You know what he's done? He's been reading that Bible. He's been asking me questions. I went and stood at his door this past Thursday before I left the facility. I said, I've got one more visit I need to make. I went over there to his door and I began to talk to him. And I said, how's that Bible reading coming? He said, well, I've been reading in the book of Genesis. I said, I'm glad you did. I said, I said, I challenge you to read in the book of John. I want him to learn, learn about the love of God. Yeah. I want him to learn about Jesus Christ who died on the cross for him. Because his, 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 his Quran is not going to give him that, dear friend. Right. And so I've been trying to challenge him in that area. He said, you had told me that. I said, I, I really want you to read there. So I've been trying to get him to go over to the book of John. But needless to say, he's reading the Word of God. Amen. You know what? Hey, I know he's got his Quran in there. I've seen his prayer rug in his, in his cell there. But I notice he's got his Bible now, too. You know, and I'm really excited about that because that Word of God is going to help him. Uh, that Quran is not going to help him. I thought about Matthew chapter number 19, verse number 26. But Jesus beheld them and saith unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. You know what? It is possible. God can, God still does, and God is still working in our lives. Had the children of Israel given up, now think about this just for a minute. Because this is going to be, uh, this is going to be a lot of the Bible. Had the children of Israel given up, the story we read in the next few verses about them crossing over the Red Sea would have never happened. Had they given up. Think about what can happen in your life if you give up. Grandchildren being saved. Children being saved. Life's being transformed. But preacher, you don't understand. You don't know what I'm going through. Oh dear friend, I don't know what you're going through. I tell you one of the hardest things, and I've, I, I, I often talk about this, and um, hope, hopefully I can get it out, but one of the toughest things in our entire life is when we lost our oldest child. Uh, me and Kristen, we, we did get to hold her the first month. She lived in an incubator. She had 15 tubes literally coming out of her body. And she was just a little over a month old when she passed away. And when they got her out of the, out of the, out of the box or whatever you want to call that, like incubator set up, when they handed her to us, she was literally dying. And they said, they said, here's your child. And I'm sitting there, you know, I'm grateful to finally get to hold my child for a month. I've just got to look at her. But I finally get to hold my child. And as I hold my child, literally her last breaths, you know, literally she's taking her last breath. The hardest thing we ever went through, we hadn't been saved long. Uh, Kristen had just lost her job. And we then would lose our child. Folks, we lost our house. One thing after another, what the world says you must have, we lost every bit of it. Can I tell you who we still had at the end of the day? <laughs> we still had Jesus at the end of the day, dear friend. You know what? I'll get to see her again. God's provided another house. God's gave us other jobs. Oh, praise the dear Lord. I've still got Jesus. I've not lost Him, dear friend. When I went through the hard valleys of life, when I've been through the deepest, darkest valleys of life, guess who's been there? 
He's never left me. Uh, Hebrews chapter 13 says, uh, He'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Then guess what, friends? He's not left us even now. He's still with us. So when we're hanging on to the end of the road, but I think about this in our story. You know what? The children of Israel, uh, I, I like to say it like this, they were between a rock and a hard place. Uh, the Red Sea was before them. Pharaoh was before them, and if you know geography, uh, if you're good at geography and know anything about the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the landscape there, there was mountains on both sides. So, folks, there literally, there's nowhere for them to go. But let me remind you, if you look back, if you flip back and look with me at this, verse 17 of chapter 13. Look what it says. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go that God led them. Notice that because that's that's key. God led them. Where did he lead him? Not through the way of the land of the Philistines. And he even tells us, although that was near, that was a close place for him to go. He didn't want him to go that way. Why? Well, Scripture tells us why. People say that King James is hard to read, don't they? But it's awful, awful easy for me tonight. For God said, least for your venture, the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. He said, when this is going on, he said, they'll get scared of this war. He said, they'll automatically run back into Egypt. They'll say it was easier there. And that's what they do later on. But then again, in verse number 18, it says, But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness. Who was the one leading them? It was God. Verse number 21, And the Lord went before them. Man, how clear is this tonight? If God is for you, then He's taking you where you need to be. Maybe not where you want to be, but where you need to be. Um, God's purpose for them, and we read this on in verse number 17 and 18 in verses uh, chapter 14 where we were just were right before where I stopped at, but it says, And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of Pharaoh, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor unto Pharaoh and unto all his hosts and to all his chariots and to his horsemen. And all the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor in Pharaoh upon his, horse, uh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. Hey, notice this. God was going to bring glory to himself. That's what God wants to bring in every situation we face, folks. Amen. You were bought with a price. You're not your own. Right. So often we think, okay, I'm saved. Now I can be blessed because there's such a prosperity gospel out there that believes as long as you're doing what God tells you to do, there's just going to be multiple blessings that you're going to have tons of money. You're going to live high on the hog. Yet again, I go back with that grass is greener on the other side. And truly it is heaven. But we sit there and we see, oh, well, the, all this is going to happen. And then hardship comes into our life. You probably can name some saint that lived for the Lord. I had a man tell me, like I said, I've got so many testimonies. I had a man tell me the other day, I said, how's your relationship with the Lord? And he's in isolation. And I said, how's your relationship with the Lord? He said, it's been quite a few years. I said, what happened? And he told me, he said, my mom served the Lord. Begin to give me testimony for probably 20 minutes straight about what his mom did for the Lord. Didn't, didn't give her any of the glory. He said, she didn't want any glory. She was just giving the glory to the Lord. I said, well, that's wonderful. I said, what happened? He said, after all that time, God allowed her to have cancer and die. He was bitter. He was mad at God. And I told him, I said, do you think your mom would want to give glory uh, through the situation, through the cancer, through all that? I said, what'd she do? She just kept on praising the Lord. You know what? She didn't look at the cancer as, as a hindrance. That was getting her to Jesus. You know what? She didn't look at that as a hardship. She just continued to give God the glory. Um, God just wanted to receive the glory in that situation. There's a story about an old mule that one day had accidentally fell into the farmer's well. The farmer had evaluated the situation and thought to himself that neither the well nor the old mule was worth the effort to save. So he decided to haul in dirt to bury the old mule in the well. The farmer called in his neighbors, and together they began to shovel in dirt into the well. The old mule was terrified and hysterical in the beginning. But soon one idea came to the old mule's mind. He said every time a shovel of dirt landed on his back, he would shake it off and step up. Uh, he repeated this process over and over and over again. Shake it off, step up. Shake it off and step up. He would then encourage himself. And through the panic, he would encourage himself. And after some time, that old mule stepped right over that well wall. Uh, I'm saying this today. You know what? We've got to shake it off and step up. You know what? Satan's there to throw dirt on it. You know what? He's there to throw water on that fire. You get excited about the Lord. You're trying to serve the Lord. What does he do? He comes and he throws a bucket of water on it real quick. He's trying to put it out. But there's this thing, there's this person called the Holy Ghost of God. You know what he does? He comes through and blows fresh wind on that fire. You know what it does? It begins to go. It begins to go. I got a water stove at the house right now, folks. It keeps an ember in there all the time. Burns 24-7. Keeps a little ember in there. And when that ember's about to go out, that fan on that thing comes on again. You know what it does? It brings that flame back up all over again. It just takes an ember to get the fire going. But you've got to have the Holy Ghost come blow upon it. 
so we see, uh, first and foremost, we see that uh, I want to remind you tonight when you're at the end of the rope to hold on. Secondly, I want you to notice this. Uh, I want uh, notice this. Help is on the way. David wrote these words in the book of Psalm, chapter 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. When we are truly, we are just, in tr we truly today are in such a big hurry. Even when I preach, I'm awful, always in a hurry. Uh, but we are in such a big hurry that we miss out on the goodness of the Lord and what He's prepared for us. We don't ever take time to savor what God's doing. We're like, Lord, okay, I'm, 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 I finished this step. What do I go to next? If you're like me, I don't know, did any of y'all ever buy anything in Ikea? So we'll go buy something at Ikea uh, or, or somewhere else, but we go buy, we bought some furniture at Ikea for the kids, for their bedroom and everything. And so I'm always trying to get to the last step as quickly as possible. Uh, Blaze will get some new Legos. You know what he does? He goes over there and he begins to open that up. And I'm like, son, we got to start at the beginning. But I'm with you. I want to see how it's going to look in the end. And I'm trying to put it together. And sometimes I'll skip a step. But you know what? If you skip a step, you'll miss out on something important. You'll come to the end of the process and say, why do I have all these leftover pieces? I just wonder how much we've missed out in life because we're too busy trying to get to the end. We want to get to the end of the journey, but it's a journey, folks, not a sprint. You know what? We get in a hurry. We're like, Lord, why am I hanging on? Why am I in this position? And the Lord reminds us, well, you skipped a step. You know what? Praise the Lord, the rope was there to catch you on the way down, but you skipped a step. You could have avoided this altogether. This discouragement, what's going on in your life? Uh, God's protection and preparation for, for, for Israel, and again in chapter 13, verse 17 and 18, He, had, he had pr promised protection from them. He took them away from the Philistines. He took them another way. He knew that if they went that way, they would get discouraged. God took me a long way around last week. I praise His name for it. Amen. Because if I'd have went in the prison earlier, I might have missed that man. That man might have still been lost to this very day. But He took me the long way around. So I got there later than I thought I was going to get there. I left early, but it still took me a long time. It took me about three and a half hours. It was a two-hour trip. It took me three and a half hours. You know what? I'm glad that God has some timing in my life. Aren't you glad that God's got some timing in your life? Amen. Because if we've done it in our own ability, if we've done it in our own strength, He wouldn't receive the glory for it. You think you've done it yourself. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. For by grace, uh, by grace are you saved, not, uh, not by works. Um, we're saved by faith today. It's not our works. It's not our abilities. It's not what we can do. It's what God has done for us. We must remember that God purposely directed them that way. Why? To avoid some hardship. To avoid some... But He also wanted to receive the glory from it. When He got them there before the Red Sea, they had to only do what, what we must do tonight. And that's to trust the Lord. When you're hanging on, literally, by the end of your rope, you know what you're to do? You're to hang on. You're not to let go. You know what? Remind you, help is on the way. The Lord is there for you. The Lord has not left you. He has not forsaken you. Um, I love this as you continue to read, though. Verse 13 says, uh, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will show you. You know what? If we'll just stand still, we'll just wait on the Lord. We'll see His salvation. You know what? He's working some things out. He's doing some things that we, we don't even understand. It's not, uh, if I can say it like this, if it's, uh, if it's up to the Lord, uh, the Lord will take care of it. If it's up to us, we'll make a mess of it every single time. We see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, when I see the salvation of the Lord, I automatically think of uh, God wants to show them something. God wants to show us something. Uh, and it says that. It says, which He will show you. Aren't you, can't you just stand back and be amazed that God wants to show us something? You know, when you think about who you are in the grand scheme of things, we just celebrated Easter the other day. Did anybody think about themselves being there at the cross? Because it was your sins that nailed Him there. It was my sins that nailed Him there. That's why He died for our sins. Not just for uh, the one on the left hand and the one on the right hand. Not just for the ones and the Romans and everybody else that stood before Him. But for all of us. Past, present, and future. Our sins put Him there. Our sins held Him there. You know what? But He was willing to give His life. I thought about this tonight. You know what? He fights for you. Uh, verse 14 says, The Lord shall fight for you, and, he, and ye shall hold your peace. It's God that fights for you. He fought for the children of Israel. 
And we see that here in just a moment. But what a wonderful promise by God uh, that He's given us in and gave the children of Israel that He fights for us. Paul said it there, uh, very similar in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. I think about what he said there when Paul was talking about his affirmities, when Paul was talking about what was going on. He says, At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I should be exalted above that measure. For this thing I besought of the Lord Christ, though that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. You know what? I'm grateful that God's grace is sufficient even tonight. Amen. You know, whatever we're going through, God's grace is sufficient. Uh, Paul was a man of hardship. Paul was a man of trials. Yet he took pleasure in those trials. Why? Because he understood it wasn't about him. It was all about Jesus. All right. yeah. You know what? That's where we've got to get to even today. When we're holding on to the end of the rope, who's watching you? Who's paying attention? Who's watching your testimony? Who's watching your faith? Yeah. Folks, can I be real with you tonight? i got a son back there. Yeah. I've got five more over here. You know what? Though, sometimes I get of the flesh and I just get discouraged and get down. I've got little ones that are looking up to me. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. If I fail, if I quit... Who am I hurting? I'm hurting them. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, we've got other folks watching us. Amen. Saying, are they really going to do it? We've got churches like you that are supporting us. The last thing we're going to do is write back and say, oh, oh, we gave up because it just didn't work out. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to keep pressing forward. Amen. Sometimes I've got to dig in that sand and I've got to stand my ground. And sometimes I feel like I'm not moving forward real good. But can I remind us again tonight, we are to hold on. Help is on the way. And I close with this tonight. You know what? He has a plan. Thomas Jefferson said it like this. When you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. Amen. You know what? That's where we're at. That's where some of us are at in this room tonight. You know what? And you say, Brother Bushy, I'm not there today. You will be at some point in time or another. Or you've already been there some point in time or another. Praise God you're here tonight. You didn't give up. You didn't give up. Uh, I've, I've heard testimony after testimony of people that had just gotten bitter and got angry at God. Uh, I've witnessed to many different people uh, since I've been a Christian, and I hear it so often. Why are you out of church? Well, you know what? This happened. Now I'm just upset. And to be honest, they weren't mad at the preacher. They weren't mad at their family. They were mad at God. And a lot of people don't want to get honest and just say, hey, that's what I'm mad at. I I'm mad at God. You know what? I'm sure glad He can love you no matter what. I'm sure glad He'll forgive you. Uh, you know what? You can go to Him. You can express what you can't tell nobody else. But can I say this? He's got a plan. You look back through there, and it says again, it says, Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, and stand still. See the salvation of the Lord which He show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Probably today, more than any other time, uh, we're struggling. More than any other time in our life, COVID just really put everything just upside down, didn't it? Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like we have new sicknesses that they don't even know where to even begin. Uh, some of y'all have been through the medical field. Some of you know about some of the things. I often go in the doctor. I'm like, Doc, what's going on? They say, we ain't got a clue. Because there's new diagnosis uh, that people don't, have never seen before. Uh, when we go take the kids to the pediatrician, they're like, this is a mutation we've never seen before. Uh, it was at the beginning of the year, all of us went through what we thought was the flu. Come to find out, I think it was the flu and COVID at the same time. We were sick for about a full month. We just Each one of us just went through this. They didn't know. They said the test come back negative on this. The test come back negative on this. I'm sure glad when they don't know, God does though. Uh, God continues to know. Uh, can I remind you that many of us are struggling now. Some of us have already been through some struggles. You know what? Some of you are in a storm right now. Maybe nobody else knows about it. Pastor don't know about it. The person sitting beside you don't know about it, but you're in a storm right now. You know what? Can I remind us today that though you may be in a, maybe you're not in a storm, but you will go through a storm in your life. You know what? Maybe it's a small storm, but then there's the big storms. I was just out praying, and I I I, I go I, I do I prayer walk every single day, and I just go out there. If I get on my knees for a very long period of time, I'm going to sleep. Uh, so what I do is I just get alone with the Lord. I just walk and talk. I look like a crazy man walking up and down the road, but I don't care. I'm crazy anyways. Uh, but so. Uh, uh, what I do is I go on my prayer walk, and anyways, I was talking to the Lord, and I was just going through the going through this story and going through what God's plan was for the children of Israel. You know what? And then I thought about our own life when we stepped out by faith, and I left. I worked for Tyson Foods for almost twelve years, and we stepped out by faith. God, 
God had provided a wonderful job, uh, good pay, good benefits. And we stepped out by faith and I said, Lord, I said, I don't know what's next. But you know what's amazing? I've not missed a meal. You know what's amazing? My house is still being paid for. You know what's amazing? Uh, not a payment's been missed. Not a meal's been missed. Hey, folks, uh, God has blessed beyond measure. Amen. But I just Amen. keep my eyes on Him. Amen. If I put, fix my eyes on circumstances, the world looks at us like we're crazy tonight. You know that. Yeah. And if you don't, I'm telling you that tonight. The world looks at us like we're crazy. We're a bunch of nuts. Hey, guess what? We're screwed onto the right bolt, and that bolt is Jesus Christ. Amen. And... Um, so I think about the plan that God has for us tonight. God had a plan for Egypt, uh, or for Israel. God has a plan for you even tonight. Jeremiah chapter number 29, verse number 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Praise God tonight that He knows our end. Amen. You know what? I know where I'm going to be. When it, all, when, 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 when it all goes down, I know where I'm going to be. I've read the last page of the book. I know where I'm, where I'm at in all this, folks. If you don't know where you're at, this is a good time to get it made right. right you know what? This is a good time to come to the Lord. Uh, I, often, I often ask an inmate. Well, I just don't ask inmates. I ask churches. I ask individuals on the street. What stops you from day, today from getting things right with the Lord? Amen. Pride is a big one. Yeah. Bitterness. Unforgiveness. Those things will stop us from getting right with the Lord. That man I sit down at that table... He said shame was stopping him from getting right with the Lord. That man, and I went back and talked to him again this week because he asked me for some cards. So I went back and talked to him again this week that he's been so many years away from the Lord. He said, preacher, he said, I don't know why, but I opened up to you today. He said, this is the first time in eight years I've opened up to anybody about this. I looked at him and with a smile, not arrogantly, but I said, I have that way on people. Folks, I love to talk, but I know how to listen. You know what? Some of those guys just want to talk. Nobody's ever listened. Maybe there's somebody you know at your workplace. Maybe there's a family member and they're just waiting to tell, tell you what's going on. You've never took the time to listen to what they got to say. But if we would step back, they're at the end of their rope too. Yeah. I'm thinking about a family situation. I can't give you any details because I don't know what I'm supposed to and what I'm not. But I'm thinking about a family situation uh, where there's a funeral that just took place. And the gentleman took his life. He was at the end of the rope. Folks, I've been there. And I said this with a heavy heart today. On three different occasions in my teenage years, I tried to take my life. Praise God that it didn't follow through because I'd be in hell today. Amen. Amen. But who do you know right now? My mom told me the other day, she works down in Mooresville. My mom told me the other day, she said a lady went out there and tried to overdose on some medication she had. Went and sat down in the car. She said, we went out there and we began just to try to try to minister to her. And they said, we, we were doing everything we could to keep her alert and keep her until the ambulance could get there. The lady lost her job. She lost one of her family members. And she was just at the end of a rope. Folks, I'm just telling you today, hold on. Help is on the way. And He has a plan today. You know what? He has a plan for not only you, He has a plan for me, He has a plan for us. But the only way we can see that plan fully uh, to, to what it's supposed to be, is we've got to let Him be our salvation. We've got to let Him have full control. Psalm 25 and 5 says, uh, Lead me in Thy truth and teach me, for Thou art the, the Lord of my salvation. On Thee do I wait all the day. Micah 7 and 7, Therefore while I look upon the Lord, I will wait upon the Lord of my salvation. My God will hear me. Habakkuk 3 and 18 says, Yet will I rejoice in the Lord, I will joy in the Lord of my salvation. He is my salvation. If He's your salvation, don't give up. Amen. He's got the end already in store. God's plan to redeem and to restore you. He's had that ever since the fall of man. Since the foundation of the world, Jesus Christ has been set towards that cross. Why? Because He knew we were going to fail. Folks, tonight, can, I don't mean this in discouragement tonight, because like I said, I want to encourage you. Guess what you're going to do this week? Maybe tomorrow. Maybe even today. You're going to fail. There's going to come a time that you did something you shouldn't have done. Said something you shouldn't have said. I'm glad that we've got as Christians 1 John 1 and 9. I'm glad that if we're willing and, and understand that He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. But we have to confess those sins to Him. We have to come to Him and say, Lord, you know what? Here I am. I'm in this position. I've messed up. Lord, I need Your help that He is faithful to do that. Uh, he wants you to completely submit to His will. When you're hanging on, I think about 
Yet again, I'll probably never forget that quote from Thomas Jefferson. You know what? We've got to tie, uh, tie a knot in the end of that rope and just hold on. Amen. What happens when the adrenaline starts pumping, folks? You begin to get energy like you never had before. I told some folks the other day we were watching a show, and on that show was a cop show. And the cops had worked all night, and they were tired, and they got a call at the end of their shift. And they had to go into a house. And so they both got armed. They began to rush into the house. And one was training the other one. And he looked back at him. And he said, he said, be alert. He said, he said, he said this, this could be really dangerous right here. He said, you need to make sure you're paying attention. And the other one said, my adrenaline's pumping. I'm ready to go. You know what? Sometimes when we're hanging on that at the end of the rope, we have to remember we're tired. But that adrenaline begins to pump. You know what? Praise God. The Holy Spirit just gives us a little bit more strength. You know what? His grace is sufficient tonight. Amen. So can I say this, and I'll end with this tonight. Just continue to hang in there. God's not finished yet. Hold on. Help us on the way. He's got a plan. Amen. You know what? Praise God that the, that the Israelites did not give up. They could have gave up. Praise God that they had a leader that said, you know what, folks? We're just going to keep pressing on. Moses went over there and stood and held up the rod. God parted the seas. They didn't just walk across any ground. They walked across dry ground. God brought apart a miracle that can't nobody even explain. But I challenge you tonight. Folks, I hope this helps you tonight. When you get home tonight, you look in that mirror. You're going to see a miracle that can't nobody explain. God did something in your life. You know what? Where should we be tonight? We should be in a devil's cell, each and every one of us. Praise God that He didn't give up on us. Amen. In our weakness, in our ability, in what we thought we could do, He's greater. Amen. Amen. He's worthy. We celebrated last week that He's risen. Right. Do we believe that tonight? Yeah. Amen. If we believe that tonight, let's live that. Amen. There's some times in our life where we're just barely hanging on. Man, it seems like a long way up. I don't know how I ever get on this. And then all of a sudden, when you're about to give up, there's an arm that reaches down. And He comes and pulls you back up. He sets you back on, as David said in Psalm chapter number 40, He sets you back up on the solid rock. He takes you up out of that miry clay. You know what? I'm excited tonight. You know what? Like I say, if nobody else has been encouraged, I'm encouraged tonight. You know what? I needed the Word of God tonight. And I'm grateful that He's still working. Father, we thank You for Your Word tonight. We thank You for Your grace. Uh, Lord, as Pastor Kiever comes to close out, however he sees fit, Lord, I just pray tonight that, Lord, you're just working in our hearts and in our lives. God, that maybe there's somebody in here tonight that's been discouraged. And, Lord, maybe nobody else knows about it. Maybe they're sitting there and they've been debating, uh, Lord, been debating quitting church. Maybe they've got a thing, a ministry they've been debating quitting. Maybe there's even life that they've ever uh, thought about. Lord, whatever it is, God, I want them to know that, Lord, you're our encouragement. That, God, you come, Lord, uh, to die on the cross of Calvary, to work in our hearts, change our lives. And Lord, the only way that can happen is, Lord, we got to continue to hang on. Lord, we encourage one another and let each other know help's on the way. Lord, I'll put my arm around somebody. I'll pray with them. But Lord, you're able, Lord. You've got a plan in their life to bring them uh, to fruitation. Lord, to bring them to the point, point that, God, you want to bring the increase out of their life. They have an expected end. And so, Lord, I pray, Lord, uh, through this time of invitation, through this time tonight, Lord, we would realize, Lord, God, how good you are to us, and we're not giving up. In Jesus' name.